Hey everybody, this is Ed from the Whiskey Tangent Podcast, here with another Whiskey Short. And as always, I'm joined by Scott. Hey everybody. And Jacket Award recipients, Gabe. Hi friends. And Siobhan. Hello all. So you have an all-star cast <laughs> for this short. Perfect for the fall season, and Scott's going to tell you what we're going to do. Yes, uh, and a couple of all-star quarterbacks and their whiskeys. Mm. So, um, fun story. Siobhan's father... <laughs> <laughs> had a bottle of Sweeten's Cove whiskey, which is pretty expensive. It's a blend put out in part by Peyton Manning. Ed separately bought a bottle of the Bradshaw mm-hmm. whiskey from Terry Bradshaw. So we thought we'd do quarterback whiskeys for Thanksgiving. Bonus short. The first one we're going to taste is the Bradshaw. Yay. I have a one paragraph description about the whiskey. Uh, that I'll read and then, uh, you know, go through the stats and yeah. we'll, we'll taste it, you know, like we do. Like we do. Right, right. It gave, it looks consternated, yeah. not constipated. Well, also constipated. Let's get to drinking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. <clears throat> Bradshaw bourbon. Four Super Bowl victories was no ordinary feat. But then again, Terry Bradshaw was no ordinary player, so it makes sense that Terry Bradshaw Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey is anything but ordinary. Blended from the finest grains and aged in hand-selected barrels, the blend is worthy of a nod from a true champion. As Terry says, just like football, there's something so American about a good Kentucky bourbon. After a long game or a day on the ranch, because everyone has a ranch, (laughs) it really doesn't get much better than relaxing with a nice pour of bourbon to sit and reflect on the day. I'd always enjoyed bourbon, and so it's been an honor to create my own. And at over 103 proof, I hope you're ready for it. (laughs) Uh, So that's it from their uh, website. The stats are the proof is 103.8, which is 51.9%. The mash bill is 70% corn, 21% rye, 9% malted barley. The source distiller, this is sourced, is from the Green River Distilling Company in Owensboro, Kentucky. The blender bottler is silver screen bottling in the same town. Hmm. The minimum age is two years. The price is about 45 to 55. Ed, you bought this? Is that, That's about right. That's 45, 48, something like there. Yeah, and the fun facts. So three quick ones, and then we'll start drinking. Uh, 51.9 is Terry Bradshaw's career pass completion rating. Oh, look at that. So yeah. the percentage of alcohol is his pass completion rating. Which is not great, by it's the way. Con- yeah, no. Kind of low compared to I know, because I looked them up and I was like, this is kind of low. I would accentuate my whiskey by yeah, but, proofing it at my It was more of a running game back rating. then. He had a good sense of humor That's about true. stuff. But you have to understand, he started in 1970 and he was probably done by the mid 80s. The rules were different then. Like D backs could basically mug you if you're a receiver. <laughs> now, he did have great receivers. You know, he had did? Uh, uh, John Stallworth mm-hmm. and. Um, Lynn Swan. Lynn Swan, right. Yeah. Um, Franco Harris. The, well, yeah. yeah, also had a great running game with Franco yeah. Harris. So. Yeah. And Rocky Blyer. Rocky and some of the people that they had, yeah. But right. they had like 12 mm-hmm. Hall of Famers on the team. They've won four Super Bowls. Yeah. And certainly, he was a quarterback that knew how not to lose. However, he had over 20 touchdowns four times. He had over 20 interceptions <laughs> Five times. So <laughs> he has thrown the ball to both teams uh, quite <laughs> frequently. Um, if you look at his career, what made him special is he would make the pass when he had to make it. Yeah. He won the big games. It's clutch. There's not many playoff games that they got bounced out of. Every time the team was good enough, he took him to the Super Bowl and he won four for four. So yeah, he's, he's what you call a game manager. He, yeah. His stats don't show his true uh, ability. Right. And I think he probably drank too much whiskey. It, it was you know <laughs> it wasn't like personal training back then. You know they he get off there he probably drink a pint of whiskey, go to bed, get up <laughs> the next day. You know so that's I, not what it says in the description. It says on the ranch. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think he had a ranch early in his life. But. Well, no, he didn't. So start out the tasting. We have it in our neat glass. Yeah. Hmm. Pretty uh, hmm. pretty basic uh, on the nose. Nice corn smell. Nice sweetness to it. Yeah, seventy yeah. percent. Not overly alcohol forward. Uh, you know, nice fruit flavors. Maybe a little cinnamon. Yeah, maybe a little bit there. Sure. Vanilla. Okay. Definitely vanilla. Some baking spices like mm-hmm. some uh, the nutmeg, and then definitely some uh, orange zest. Yeah, it's a little bit of light light citrus in there. Sure. Some wood. Yeah, I would. <laughs> <sighs> but anyway, here we go. Yeah, give it a taste. Hmm. Yeah, a lot of orange zest on the on the mm. initial tasting. Mm. Yeah, a lot more orange zest for what's reportedly two years old. This is actually not a very bad whiskey at all. It's actually very, very no. Nice. It's really drying on the finish right yeah. now yeah. for me. Yeah, I agree. Um, but the initial palate is quite nice, and mm-hmm. the finish before it actually ends isn't bad either. Yeah. But like it's a lot of oakiness. It's not a bad whiskey. No, there's nothing not outstanding bad. about this. I wouldn't cross the street to order it, but if it's here right now, and for what it is, it's a beautiful 
bottle. It has great color. It's not expensive. I get like a leathery taste Do you really? to it. Yeah. I think that's sort of the dry finish that I'm getting. All right. Now hear me out. Hear yeah. me out. Hear okay. Me yeah. out. Okay. What is that stuff called that you use to spray on your Christmas tree? The flocking? Yes. For some reason, I got a whiff of that. A whiff of flocking? <laughs> I'll give you a good flocking anytime you want. Oh, oh geez. Geez. There's one. The over-under on double entendres <laughs> tonight is that, seven. That's how many days suspension he gets from HR. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's funny. They always run out just before it's time to record again. Right. <laughs> like, always suspended when I'm not recording. It's amazing. It works out so well like that. <laughs> and then, boom, I came off suspension yesterday, and here I am. Here he is again. Yeah. <laughs> Put a couple drops of water in there, and it brought a little more sweetness to it. Mm. But like you said, it, it drops off pretty quickly. Yeah. I, sipping it more, I'm getting more of the baking spices that, Ed, you were saying. You were definitely cinnamon. Yeah. You know, sort yeah. of pumpkin yeah. pie. Like, if like you guys a, yeah. say sweetness one more time, I'm going to start singing more. See, Sweetness? Sweetness, yeah. I was only joking when I said I'd like to bludgeon every tooth in your head. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I don't even know if we should cricket that one. <laughs> uh, right. I'm, I'm uh, conflicted. conflicted. Well, yeah. Maybe they already happened. I don't know. Maybe they did. <laughs> Only the edit knows. Yes, right. <laughs> On the finish, though, I am getting quite a bit of a, a low throat afterburn mm. deep down. <laughs> what that's supposed to do. But now we're talking about whiskey. Can we stay on topic, Gabe? There's two. <laughs> Just it just kind of came up in me all of a sudden. You know, I was mm. tasting it, and I, I had a couple swallows, and all of a sudden it's like <laughs> I'm back. Yeah. Honestly, I have to. You know, these celebrity whiskeys, you never know what you're going to get. Oh yeah, totally. And I was honestly had low expectations, so maybe that's playing into it. Yeah. But it's not a bad whiskey. It's it only two years old. Yeah, I, mean, I like it better at thirty eight dollars, sure. thirty five dollars. Yeah, it's slightly, yeah. slightly above what you I think mean, you would pay. It's a gimmick whiskey, right? I mean, you know, you buy this and you bring it over your house as like your stealer friend, like, oh, drink yeah, it up, drink yeah. it up, Bobby. Here you go. Oh God, this is a perfect present for your stealer's buddy. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I didn't finish the fun fact. The Green River Distilling Company has roots that go back to 1885. So where they sourced from is legit. And the Silver Screen Bottling Company, which is the company, the blender bottler who set this up, they also produce a James T. Kirk whiskey and a vodka based on the movie The Step Brothers called Prestige Worldwide. <laughs> <laughs> I just made Scott watch that like two weeks ago. I know. When I saw this in, the, in, the, in my research, I was like, I have to mention this. Thing. Yeah, because it's, I mean, it is what it is, but it's a funny movie. You should definitely watch it at least once. Do you, I mean, do you think they house, served this at the Catalina Wine Mixer? <laughs> they did. The Catalina Wine Mixer. It's like exactly, exactly where they served it. It's like with you, Gabe. Like, I just want to punch in the face. And you're like, Gabe's like, is there anything I knew about that? No, 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 no. <laughs> no. Playing my drums? Playing my drums? No, no, not at all. No. <laughs> Step Brothers, you got to watch it. All right, so let's go through the tasting notes, see how we did. Okay. Wait, first of all, I just like people that, like, yes, yeah, Scott, we did watch it five years ago when the fucking movie <laughs> came out. No, try it 10 years ago. I know. Right. Right. Hey, well, it's new to me. God. <laughs> hey, everybody, let your kids watch it now. They're old enough. <laughs> yeah. It's been 10 years. Right. <clears throat> On the nose. Vanilla. Yeah. Ding. Toffee. Banana. Leather. Okay. Hey, all right. And campfire notes. I didn't get any sort no, of. No, I didn't you, get that. You did say wood. Yeah, but. But no, yeah, like that's, smoke. That's a bit of a broad spectrum to it is. describe the whiskey. I think we did better on the palate. Cinnamon, baking spices, vanilla, yeah, yeah. and coconut, which we did not actually coconut. taste, but yes. pretty good. Uh, on the finish, wood, vanilla, and butterscotch. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Well, this is their tasting notes from their website. Right. I, like, I found Terry Bradshaw's tasting notes. <laughs> Taste birdie and hot. <laughs> Make my head funny. Wow. Feel like I got sacked by two tall Jones. So guess what? This means we cannot tag Terry Bradshaw <laughs> in the Instagram. Sure Terry Bradshaw's got a sense of humor. Sure we can. Hey. Editing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. Right. It'll come out like this. This whiskey is really good tasting. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, right. He'll just this go online a- and take Terry Bradshaw and just like sample different words so they can put together a coherent sentence. Uh, so, I don't know. This is pretty good, right? For, yeah. Uh, yeah, for the price. It's uh, nothing to write home about, but it's not bad. It would be good at 37 It's okay at $47. i am saying i am just going to say that. Yeah, like, the uh, extra 70 bucks is you're paying for the Bradshaw but name. I like the right? bottle. I like the packaging. I like the novelty of it. And it's a nice if bottle. If you give it as a gift, your friend isn't going to like throw it in your face like, like it's piss or no, something. Especially if they are a Steelers fan. And especially if they are an adult. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need any more. Enough fun. We're well, a chimpanzee. Well, <laughs> that's very grown up of you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to taste the Sweetens Cove after a short break so we can clean out our neat glasses. Hey. 
And welcome back. And I'm going to throw it back to Scott, and he's going to tell you about Sweetens Cove. <laughs> Thanks, Gabe. As I alluded to in the intro, Siobhan's father was uh, nice enough to give us a sample of this whiskey. Then later said, you know, I know some of the people involved with the Sweetens Cove. Maybe I can reach out to them. Right. And Siobhan was like, Scott, could you write up something about your podcast and we could send it to them and then maybe they'll send us a bottle. Right. All that happened. And we did yeah. through the proper channels. We right. sent it to um, Richard, Richard, Richard Bronson. Bronson. And then we contacted uh, Mark from Sweetens Cove. Mark Rivers, yes. And But for some reason, we still haven't gotten that bottle. Yeah. That has been promised to us three times now yeah well guess what i have a nice surprise for you ladies and gentlemen <laughs> what peyton come on out oh. oh my god <laughs> no peyton man is not here that would have been fucking amazing right though, that really right? would have been yeah. but we got eli instead <laughs> oh <laughs> He did win two Super Bowls. I know. Oh. It just pisses me off. I know. I know. It's New York. It doesn't piss me off, and I'm a New York Giants fan. Well, because you're a New York Giants fan, so it's good for you. I'm saying that when he played us, we always seemed to have his number, and then he would go win a Super Bowl after we beat him twice. Yeah, so it yeah. Gets, it gets kind of annoying. It, it, that, that's the thing. Eli Manning could not win against the Eagles, but then in those years that we would beat the Giants twice, they would go on and win the Super Bowl. That's exactly why we don't bring up the Giants, because it, <laughs> it always ends up here. Uh, yeah. No, I'm fine. No, the only people with vitriol and anger are the two mm, to the right. Vitriol. To the left. Mm-hmm. Anger to the left of me, vitriol to the right. Here, Here I, I am. am. Stuck, Stuck in, in the, the middle, middle with, with you. you. Okay, anyway, um, I have a, a description of Sweetens Cove, and uh, then we will drink it. I, I will say one thing before you go. Okay. Peyton Manning, way better quarterback sure. on paper than Terry Bradshaw. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, for sure. His lowest completion percentage ever was his rookie season at 56.7%. That's still six points pretty much higher than Bradshaw's <laughs> career average. Yeah. And thank God he's not doing his completion percentage for alcohol Ooh. because it would be like 120, <laughs> 132. He's um, got a career 65.3% completion. Wow. Yes. Anyway, can we taste it? No. No. We have Bye. to do the description and then we'll taste it. See if Peyton Manning's whiskey is better than yeah. Bradshaw's whiskey, just like See. his completing percentage. Okay. Named for a beautiful nine-hole golf course located at the end of a gravel road in Tennessee's Sequatchie Valley, where first-timers are expected to take a celebratory shot of whiskey, Sweetens Cove Tennessee Bourbon was the brainchild of, among many others, Super Bowl-winning quarterback Peyton Manning, tennis legend Andy Roddick, and sportscaster Jim Nance. Mm. Mm. But it was Sweetens Cove's master blender Marianne Eves who really brought it all together. Marianne has been recognized by Whiskey Advocate magazine as the next generation of the bourbon industry and honored by Forbes magazine in their famous 30 Under 30 list. Before joining Sweetens, Marianne worked for Castle & Key, where in 2014 she was the first woman to become a master distiller in the state of Kentucky. That's awesome. Their first release, Sweetens Cove 2020, was limited to just 100 barrels of 13-year-old bourbon and could only be found in Tennessee and Georgia. The 2021 release, which we have tonight, is a blend of over 200 barrels of 4, 6, and 16-year wow. Tennessee bourbons mm. and is available in eight states, Colorado, Georgia, Indiana, Louisiana, Kentucky, South Carolina, Tennessee, and Texas. Marianne says that the 4-year-old bourbon has notes of honey, citrus, apple peel, and pomegranate. That's interesting. Ooh. The six year has deeper flavors of dark fruit, leather, and pepper, and the sixteen year has a more mature combination of red wine, baking spices, brown sugar, and a prominent oak finish. Very mm. interesting. Its proof is one thirteen point seven. It's uh, age, uh, as I said, four, six, and sixteen year blend. The mash bill is undisclosed, but the six year is the primary spirit with equal parts of the four and the sixteen filling out the rest. Oh. The source distiller, uh, it is sourced. It's undisclosed, but the three bourbons are from different sources. So they ah. didn't get them from all from the same place. The blender bottle is Sweetens Cove Spirits Company. The price is $200. Nice. So it's kind of like a blood oath in a way. Yes, because the blood oath is always a blend of three different whiskeys. And it was named the number one celebrity alcohol brand out of 63 total. Wow, there's a lot of them. That's a lot. Uh, by Esquire Magazine. High it's not really it. fair to, to put this against the Bradshaw, mainly because it's higher proof. Okay. Its youngest expression is older than the entire Bradshaw bottle, <laughs> right? It's got okay. six year and a th- 16 year. So how I'm going to go out on this. 
Okay. I don't know if it's worth $200 yet. Mm. I'm betting it's not, mm. but it sure as shit better be better than the two-year-old fucking Bradshaw yeah. whiskey or else yeah. he's got a huge problem. Yeah. I, it's you, not even Terry's fault. No, you make a good point. And the only reason I put these two together is because you happened to buy the Bradshaw and then we got, you know, this sort of fell into right. our lap and they're both quarterbacks and football, Thanksgiving, you know. Right. Very light uh, nose on the uh, initial smell. Definitely vanilla. Ooh, I'm getting a little bit of banana, like okay. that Bradshaw said it had, but this, I actually get a little bit of it. You know, like a banana's uh, dessert. Very light. Yeah, like, like a banana cream pie. Right. It's like a liqueur. Ooh. I'm also, I'm also getting, I know caramel's a normal smell, but sure. I'm getting the caramel creams you would get as a kid. Oh. You know, like with the little gets. white centers. Definitely oh, yeah, some the little, citrus. the cow the tails chewy. or whatever they call them. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Creamy. Let's take a taste of this. We're all excited to. Oh, I'm very excited. We're engorged. Mm. Wow. Ooh. That's way more complex than the rest. That's way very more, complicated. Way like, more. holy crap. Someone took time on this one. Yeah. What's her name? Marianne. Marianne. Eves. Yeah, she knows what she's doing. This is wonderful. I love mm. how it just relaxes on the palate. Mm -hmm. If you put it on some water, it opens mm. up the citrus. I was just going to say, there's a heavy citrus. Uh, I mean, there is a there. citrus. I did say that. I don't think anybody heard me, though. And a little bit of bitterness yeah. that, that a citrus peel might give right, you. Right, mm -hmm. like a zest. Yes. Like an orange zest. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I can agree with that, but I, I, I taste a little more lemon zest. Okay. With, if you say the bitterness, then... So you get a lemon bitterness as opposed to an R. Okay. Yeah, I but agree. it's 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 a broad spectrum of, of, of situations. Sure, sure. So speaking of bitterness, do you think that Peyton Manning is bitter that he's such a better quarterback, has a better whiskey, and only has a one four Super Bowls like Bradshaw? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Did, he, did he win two? Did he win one in the Colts and one in Denver? He did. Speaking of Peyton Manning, the uh, the best thing I believe he ever did was when he was on SNL a few years back. Oh, yeah. yeah. And they had the commercial of him helping the underprivileged kids playing pickup football in the park. And he was just basically like <laughs> ripping him a new one and throwing, <laughs> telling the one uh, slow kid to go in the porta potty. He was being a complete jerk and like throwing him in their faces. <laughs> that, was that was a classic, you know. Because like Peyton has this, um, you know, a persona of being like a super really nice, nice guy. Yeah. yeah. Putting a little bit of water on this, though, it, it brings up... Yeah, let me do that. ...more citrus sweetness. Now it's like an orange marmalade. Wow. Yeah, okay. that's very descriptive. I'm uh, getting a bit of the dryness that I was getting on the Bradshaw with, with a little bit of water in it. It's not leathery, though. I'm not getting as much as the, the first one, though. It's, no, not as much, no. The, the taste is holding on better. It's, uh, it's, yeah, uh, th this is a much better whiskey. Oh, yeah, yeah, the age statement is definitely showing itself. It doesn't burn as much, even though it is a bit higher on the proof. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're it's, right. It's yeah. maturity is coming through. Yeah, you know why? Because you know some of those that are really high in proof, they just burn. It's just right, right there. But yeah, this one is smooth. Mm. Scott and I have disagreed about our feelings towards Thanksgiving over the years. Yeah. But to me, when I look at my childhood, you know, when we have a big family and after dinner, the men all go out in the living room and, you know, unbuckle yep. the belt and the football game's on and you just kind of sit out there. And you watch Circle Detroit. Jerk. And <laughs> Ah, sorry, I'm sorry. All right, all right. Let, Ed was opening up. Let I'm him sorry, go. Yeah. I mean, He's opening up his pants. Was, what was disturbing, it was a childhood memory. So <laughs> that's what made it. That's what took it left for me. All right, Ed, finished. Go ahead. I want to hear the... Uh, uh, no, fuck that. It's over now. Uh, the bottom line is we would watch football, then we'd have sandwiches later. It's over. Fuck it. Yeah, so I like Thanksgiving for that. And now I don't ever again because you're bringing up painful memories that never even happened. <laughs> <laughs> Ed's gonna go off and cry in the corner now. So that's what's, that's maybe what's it, and he'll be like, yeah. maybe it did because you know, you know why? Because maybe I went from that scene to looking at the sign in Shoprite, going, uh, "Complete turkey dinner, forty nine ninety nine. Turkey, mashed potatoes, sweet potatoes, and a green bean casserole." I'm sitting there like, I should probably just buy that because I don't really have anywhere else to go. I'll just, Aww. I'll just cook it up and. At least I'll have turkey. Oh. Yeah. So what road is this that we've turned on to? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> this is, uh, he doesn't have family. The turn for my happy. I think I know, the turn yeah. for my happy childhood to like now I'm like I'm trying to figure out like what have you been doing right, for well, Thanksgiving? We, just, we should have a Friendsgiving. Why don't we? Why don't we? Why don't we, we have do that? with people we want to have? Yeah. Well, what time would you have it? I, right. We'll have to be after now. It has to be like December now. We're waiting too long. Like, like it was like in five days or something. <laughs> I, know. I know. It is. Yeah, going to get a bag with turkey pot pie and just sit on the couch with like three of them, like one in, <laughs> one in a row. Just like, uh, right. Smoke up, Johnny. Exactly. You know what I got for Christmas? <laughs> Got a pack of smokes. Get a cigarette burn in my arm. Is this Breakfast Club? Yes. Is that what's happening around? Yes. Wow. This, this was happening in my house when you spill paint in the garage. Right. <laughs> uh, so let's just do the taste of notes and we'll close out. See how we did. On the nose, aromas of breakfast cereal, bananas, yay, yay. dried strawberries. That's mm. weird. Mm. 
leather mm. yeah. and integrated oak on the nose. Integrated mm. oak as opposed to outgraded. Right. <laughs> integrated. <laughs> or disintegrated. <laughs> Um, the palate is super weird. Grape nuts cereal. Wow, I'm not getting much green in this. Uh, I've never had grape nuts. Yeah, they're terrible. Allspice, <laughs> <laughs> bitter chocolate. Okay, so like baking chocolate. Maybe. Right, right, right. Yeah. Pipe tobacco, which is interesting. I can kind of see that, uh, and it says and an earthiness. This mm-hmm. is whiskey advocates. Yeah, okay, yeah, sure. sure. By the way, now. on the finish it says powdered sugar, cracked pepper, and baking spice. I don't know. I'm just getting a lot of sweet. I'm not getting a lot of the pepperiness. No, I'm not no, either. I'm not getting a whole lot of pepper either. Cracked pepper doesn't seem to be the right tasting note here. Powdered sugar, maybe, because yeah, it's sweet. just you a very what? generic sweetness. Maybe it's the combination of them that tampers down the pepper. But Possibly. To, to the point where you can't Possibly. taste it? Well, you know what? <laughs> I, let's be honest with each other. I am not no, a huge fan of peppery whiskey there's a spiciness on the yeah finish there is that could i suppose be described as but well. usually pepper. when whiskeys are peppery they are like so intense yeah yeah right but i mean you say spicy and spicy could gabe be a- i have spoken <laughs> <laughs> and we will wow. not be going back and forth on this sir. <laughs> wow Spicy can be interpreted a number of ways, and pepper is a very distinctive taste. It is. It, it is. It is. And sometimes when people say white pepper, it's kind of like black pepper, right. but it's really faint, and yes. they'll just make. Well, I mean, I was a, I was a chef, and uh, yeah, there are two d- distinct. Uh, they are tastes. Yes, uh, I'm yeah. not getting either. Okay, not, it, even before the water, you didn't. Scott's just gonna have to drop in an ending here, like from like three episodes ago. <laughs> I'm like, would you? Predict? Oh, once again, thanks for being. <laughs> it was supposed to be a short. All right. So, so yes, Ed, yeah, take us so out. Listen. This is a nonsense episode. Right, it's a right nonsense right. episode. It is not uh, nonsense. It's full of greatness. It's like it three is. shorts. Yeah, all right. So, once again, you have two different price points here. So, if, <laughs> it's not hard to, to make a decision. If you live in Pittsburgh and you want to get your friend a Bradshaw whiskey for about $45, go ahead. Right. If you got $200 burn hole and you want the Andy Roddick, Jim Nance, Peyton Manning whiskey, <laughs> it's complex. It's delicious. It's $200. You know, maybe something you have once a year. If $200 to you is $20, then yeah, you can have it on your bar every night. Yeah, it's very good. And so, um, for the Whiskey Tangent Podcast, I'm Ed. I'm Scott. I'm Siobhan. I'm Gabe. Later. Later.